Hello, this is Dr. Jeffrey Miller from Catonsville, Maryland. My topic today is orthodontic round tripping as visualized through comb beam CT. My name is Jeffrey Miller. I graduated from Towson University. I did my dental school training at University of Maryland. I got my orthodontic certificate at SUNY Buffalo. My board certification in 1991. I've been in private practice in the Maryland area for 32 years. I'm a member of the Golden Circle of Excellence through 3M. And I frequently speak on uh, comb beam CT as it relates to orthodontic treatment. When we talk about uh, round tripping, if you take a look, that means you're flaring the teeth out for better alignment and then retracting them back over what is considered to be you know, better bone. If you look at the right, you can see the teeth are being flared out, then the in, uh, uh, interproximal reduction is done, and then the teeth are brought back over the original position of the bone. This is a case that was transferred to us. Uh, these records are from the original orthodontist. Uh, she's a class two division one with significant upper and lower crowding. If you take a look at the original Panorex, uh, and the CEPH, it's fairly typical of a class two division one patient with uh, upper or lower, lower crowding. Apparently what the treatment plan was for this patient was to extract two upper bicuspids once uh, the teeth were well aligned and then use re retraction mechanics to camouflage the class two, which is a fairly straightforward um, routinely done uh, treatment plan. The lower was just leveled and aligned uh, and there was no interproximal reduction done. Now if you noticed in these, this is a photo uh, shortly after the extractions were done, you know that she is already in rectangular wire and that's important because I'm going to show you in a minute. Here's the uh, the photos we took when the first initial visit with our office, you can see most of the extraction space is closed. There's still some finishing and torquing and things to do, uh, but uh, fairly uh, clinically, it looks like a fairly well treated case. Now, first thing we do is, uh, you know, we take this, just like most orthodontists, we take a set of diagnostic records. Our diagnostic records includes a comb beam CT. Take a look at her comb beam CT. Uh, she's got a fairly, fairly uh, obvious ODP pattern, uh, orthodontic dehiscence pattern from uh, over expansion, but it's more than that. Uh, she also has an abscess associated with uh, the lower uh, le uh, right central incisor. Uh, we sent her for air, uh, endo evaluation and most likely need a perio evaluation as well. This is a, a section through approximately the CEJ or a little bit below the CEJ to give you an idea of the magnitude of the hissence associated with those teeth. Now, graphically what happens, uh, you start out with the teeth, uh, you know, in uh, the original malocclusion where the teeth are fairly centered within the alveolar bone generally. Um, then they're leveled and aligned, and when you level and align them, assuming you're using round wire, they, they tend to flare out if you have crowding. They, they flare out to a larger radius. Once they flare out to a larger radius, uh, then uh, this case, a rectangular was, wire was put in. I have no idea whether a rectangular wire was used to, to, to level and align them from the beginning, but it wouldn't yield a different result. Then, you, then you're torquing the tooth, the center of rotation becomes that bracket. So what you're doing is you're ending up torquing the tooth right out of the alveolar housing. The anatomy of the alveolar housing is significant because sometimes you may not want to do it that way. In this particular case, you didn't, you, you know, it was the wrong thing to do. And then the teeth were retracted back over the alveolar bone. I think the prevailing uh, philosophy is that if you bring the teeth and you retract them back, they go back into the bone and there's no issues. I don't believe that happens. I believe that once the tooth 
dehisses through the, the cortical plate, that bone defect seems to follow the tooth back into its final position. Uh, here is a, a sagittal slice of that upper central incisor, and you can see, um, I'm not sure this is a clinical, ever going to be a clinical issue, but you can see there's certainly compromised bone support for that central incisor. Uh, here's another case. This is a case that, that, that I treated. Uh, we used um, incognito uh, lingual appliances on the upper and traditional labial appliances on the lower. Uh, it's a 29-year-old male patient. He has a history of trauma to tooth number eight uh, with root canal therapy. So we are, and he's missing two lower central incisors. Our plan is to extract two upper first bicuspids and treat him as if he had four teeth taken out although two of the four were already removed when he came to see us. Now, the, the catch was the upper right central incisor had a history of trauma. So we wanted to make sure that that tooth was not, uh, was not ankylosed before we went and extracted the bicuspids. So we took um, a, there's his occlusals, we took the pan and ceph, and we were trying to assess on the pan and ceph if the teeth c could be leveled and aligned uh, comfortably before extracting the uh, ex extractions and it looked like it was going to be okay to do it that way. This is a uh, combi CT taken uh, right after we put the brackets on. This was a we want a confirmation we uh, confirmation that the the upper incisors could be level aligned uh, prior to uh, extraction and that's, this is just a, a little better detail. This is actually uh, right here is the upper left lateral incisor. Okay, so here he is. This is only in round wire so far. Here he is leveled and aligned. Um, you can see his cuspids are class two. We're getting the alignment of the lower incisors. Uh, here he is from occlusal, fairly well aligned. And at this point, we sent them for the extraction of the uh, two upper first bicuspids. Okay, and here he is level and aligned with round wire, and you can see the position of the upper left lateral incisors fairly well centered. Okay, he ends up uh, deciding not to get the extractions. Uh, apparently, he bumped into a friend of his at the uh, grocery store, and that person was in braces, had extractions of bicuspids, and he looked in this young lady's mouth and he saw there were, as he says, holes in the mouth from the extraction space. And he didn't want the same thing, so he elected not to have extractions. Uh, unfortunately, we had put a, we put a rectangular wire. And if you know linguals, uh, torque is expressed very efficiently with, with um, lingual appliances. If it's working from the lingual side, for some reason the torque is uh, expressed better. That's discussion is not germane to this uh, uh, conversation, but you'll just have to take my word that the torque is expressed better from the lingual than it is from the labial. Take a look at the tissue around the lateral incisor starting to strip. And this is after this is sometime after he had the rectangular wire put in. We sat him down and talked to him about it uh, and convinced him to get the bicuspid take oh, upper bicuspids taken out. Okay, so here is what he looked like right before we had the bicuspids extracted uh, after he had a uh, rectangular wire placed. Okay, take a look. This is the upper left lateral incisor. So if you take a look at the progression, here is uh, from the first initial treatment right when the first cone beam was taken. This is after level and aligning with round wire only. And here is after we had a rectangular wire where we torqued the anterior teeth. And you can see the root is starting to dehiss through the limit of the cortical plate. Here he is. Uh, so progress, we're retracting those teeth back. If you notice the tissue defects, follow the teeth back. And that's typically what we've been seeing. And here he is finished. Uh, everything's aligned, spaces are closed. Uh, take a look at the finished uh, upper left lateral incisor. So he went from 
a tooth that's fairly well centered in the bone anatomy to a tooth that is torqued and dehissed and then we retract at the tooth back when you retract it the, the tissue the bony defect tends to follow the tooth that's a pretty scary image however if you take a look at the axial view it's a little bit better you see there's a coupling of bone around that tooth what's gone is the facial cortical plate and it's probably has to do from the round tripping using the rectangular wire this next case is a 59 year old female she has fairly well mutilated dentition uh, she has a lingually locked upper right lateral incisor uh, we treated her also with incognito lingual appliances but if you notice there's no brackets on the central or the lateral incisor this is three months into treatment what we're trying to do is make room uh, and then once we have room then we'll bring the teeth uh, into place here she is at nine months the brackets are, are uh, placed uh, on the central and lateral incisor but not really engaged there's an upper slot with these brackets you can see that this wire is resting in this upper slot just to hold it okay here she is after 14 months she's finally engaged 17 months 27 months at 30 months uh, we felt she was just about done we took a comb CT this is on a machine that takes a, f a limited field of view and this is the upper, you can see the blue here, the upper left, upper right central incisor. You can see that that central incisor is very well centered within the alveolar bone. Now normally you have a one-third to two-thirds, but this tooth started way back towards the lingual. The point is, if we would have done it the other way, if we would have round-tripped this tooth, I can only imagine there would be very little facial bone left on that patient's um, so to support that upper lateral incisor. Here she is, uh, start to finish. It's not an ideal treatment, but I think considering what she started with, it's a it's a good result. Uh, thanks for listening. If you do have any questions, you can always email me. My email address is drmiller at orthodonticassess.com. Thanks so much.